and then I'm going to take uh, another four questions, and that could be our last round. Quarter to nine, yeah. That could be our last uh, round. Can I just say that I don't believe you can say there's no nation-on-nation nation war, but when we have Vietnam, for example, where America did yeah. invade it. Two million people. Two million people died of Vietnamese. Iran. You go through this. It's simply not true. What has been done with the nation is it went from being the North Atlantic Treaty Organization to operating. I mean, out of there, it doesn't really describe it in South, uh, in South Asia. Um, there, is no, there is no purpose to it apart from the military purpose. And Bruce is right. If, when the Warsaw Pact is done, so should NATO be done, increasingly it's been used to circumvent. UN resolutions, and this is what happened in Kosovo, and it's what happened again, uh, it's what's happened again in Afghanistan, and I think it's yeah. pretty yes. uh, Okay, I'm going to take the last round of things. Uh, Brian, Brian Cooper, the gentleman over there, the lady over there, and the uh, gentleman, and the gentleman. We're going to take the last five questions. Okay? And I'm, I'm going to guard Stan here. Okay, uh, who was the first one? Uh, Brian, Brian was. Um, Commander Gilchrist is um, very welcome here as a retired member of the Armed not, Service. Not Commander. Oh, uh, um, and it's very good that uh, when generals and others can retire, they can take part in political debate. I want to find the only person here who is increasingly concerned, say the least, that the traditional constitutional principle in this country of the non politicization of the military is now being undermined. I am not happy that serving British soldiers from Afghanistan or wherever should appear on the media and make statements which can easily be understood as supporting the government of the day in this war policy. Equally, those who are courageous enough to uh, period in public from the sort of war coalition, alas, take the consequences. And it seems to me that we, at our peril, under my tradition, the serving military do not make political statements. My other, that's my comment. My question is, is it the case that some extremely horrific weapons are being used in Afghanistan? Because last week I saw a television report of an American operation and the weapon which would obviously, or well, very obviously, I think, be used <coughs> was napalm. Is napalm being used in Afghanistan? Thank you, thank you Brian. Uh, uh, the gentleman there, the lady here, uh, and uh, we're going to take just hand the Five questions we're going to take. Yes, you are yeah, my, my Who, who are you? Can you tell, give us your name? Yes, my name is Ian Anderson, and I'm going to campaign to make war's history. I want to um, reiterate your observation, Bruce, about illegal war. And it seems to me that there's just two components to an illegal war. There's juice ad bellum, which is the reason for going to war, and there's juice in bello, which is how you conduct the war when you're in it. So juice ad bellum, if you go to the UN Security Council and ask for permission to start a war in Chapter 7, that's objective because you don't believe that you have the right to proceed under Article 51. If you, a juice in Bello, have colleagues in the United States who think it's reasonable to conduct what they call extraordinary rendition, that is kidnapped. If you have colleagues in the United States who think it's reasonable to conduct what they call enhanced interrogation. That is torture. <laughs> These are illegal matters. Okay, then we have the question. Oh, well, well they just take my comment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, the lady over there. Yes, I'm also from the Campaign for Lake Wars History with Linda McKenzie. Um, in fact, my question is addressed straight to Bruce Kent because um, we are setting up a parliamentary committee. When I say we, I, I mean we are working with MPs to set up a parliamentary committee, an all-party parliamentary group for ending and preventing war. And as a personal invitation to you, um, 
Spruce, if you would come and um, address it. And the first meeting is on the 7th of December <coughs> in Committee Room 6 in the House of Commons. And there's some paper going around about it. Um, we really need to change this whole culture of making war and resorting to war as a priority. And the only way to do it is by actually making sure that the international laws of war are properly known by all the politicians, enforced by the law enforcement officers, understood by the military so that they sometimes refuse to obey them sometimes. Thank you. Yeah? Okay. And the public knows them as well. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, so I'm an independent. Um, two part question. I think this is the fourth war that Britain has engaged in Afghanistan, and the Russians have engaged in one unsuccessfully as well. Why is this different? Secondly, if the reconstruction process is going so well, why aren't the local inhabitants rejecting the insurgents? Thank you. Uh, start on who's onwards. Well, I hope you were going to send me an invitation, please do, but not, not in the public platform. I, I've never refused an invitation like that. Why do we need another organisation called Make War History? <coughs> when you've only recently found it something called Move Established a War. I don't know, but the Peace Movement has a wonderful gift of splitting itself. As far as, uh, as France's positions, I, I, I lived through the Second World War. I didn't think I thought there was a jolly good war against an evil person and an evil system. And the idea of uh, people, Douglas Bader or someone standing up in uniform and saying, uh, supporting the troops and the government policy, <coughs> didn't bother me in the slightest. So I don't get to get fuss about supporting national policy for the soldiers. I think they should support the right policy and the right war. And if they disagree, they should say that. But the idea of them saying that what they think in uniform doesn't bother me. What does bother me is when one of them signs up to join the Conservative Party, as if that was his mm -hmm. function as a general. Mm -hmm. so quite wrong. Anyone else on the panel? Um, do I just say about the question about what would Afghanistan look like without the British Army and the NATO forces? Well, in my view, it would look like a country where the people themselves decided what they wanted to happen and where. Does that they, well, no, it's all right. I've known that all of you have come to the British Army, but surely it is for the right of people in Britain or the right of people in America to tell the Afghans what to do. And the point that was made earlier about colonial occupation is absolutely right. That's what we've got in Iraq. That's what we've got in Afghanistan, and we have no right to be there. And only the Afghans themselves, possibly with help from the people in the immediate region, but not from the richest countries in the world, are the people who have to make this decision. Nobody else will do it for them. And this idea that the British Army is some humanitarian mission there, when actually <laughs> waging a war, is the biggest deceit that you can put across the night. I'll, I'll try and answer some of those. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm against the military and political side. I'm not here on the political front at all. I'm, I'm telling you what I think ought to be done to help get Afghanistan back on its feet. And, and we have a moral responsibility, if you read Ghost Wars, to put Afghanistan back on its feet, because a lot of its destruction was caused by ourselves and the Americans and the Saudis. And if you read that book, it's, it's an eye price. Um, I, I am almost 100% positive, but I cannot be 100% positive that there is no napalm being used anywhere by any NATO forces. Or depleted uranium? I we didn't ask about depleted uranium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. Yeah. Well, there aren't any tanks there, so I very much doubt it. Um, so, well, so, 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 so that's the answer. So I, I, no, I, we, we, none of us want a politicisation. Where, where the extraordinary good commander went on the radio the other day, um, I thought was, was actually just perfectly clear. There's no political statement in it. He made it in support of the government. He didn't actually support anything the Prime Minister said. He actually just told it as it was. The young captain, the guard's captain, who came back and listened to BBC and Sky on his, on his r and and went on the radio and said, it is just not like that. And he stood up and, and actually... Um, Humphreys was actually very good and listened and didn't pull him into submission. It was extraordinarily good. And you'll find, and I can see quite a lot of people who presume in the military here who've been in Afghanistan and actually believe we're doing the right thing for the right reasons to help the Afghans get back on their feet. And we need to ignore that. The place will implode if we pull out because mm -hmm. Afghanistan uh, is right on the border of Pakistan. That Pashtun belt is currently very unsettled. And, and it needs any support we can give. Is also a political statement, isn't it? Yeah. 
it's not a political statement. It's a statement of fact. It's a statement of fact. 